Hey gang, Jerry here. In today's video, we're gonna be making a very traditional bluebird house. Uh, this is made out completely out of cedar. Um, it's a very easy project to make. In fact, I'll have a link down in the description below of a set of uh, materials lists and exploded view with all the dimensions if you're interested in building one yourself. Uh, again, very easy project. Costs less than $10 to make and you can knock this out in just a few hours. If you wanna see how I made this one, stick around. All right, so we have our board here and this is a solid cedar board. It's a one by six by eight foot and for dimensional lumber, that means three quarters of an inch by five and a half inches by eight foot. Now cedar varies in size quite a bit. So this board here actually measures about five and three eighths instead of five and a half inches. Now that's not gonna really affect the project too much. It's only gonna affect the very bottom piece. That's the last piece we're gonna be installing anyway. So we can cut that to size once we have the rest of the birdhouse assembled. And I'll show you that later on in the video. Now, when you're choosing your a uh, piece of cedar. Uh, cedar is notorious for having warpage and cupping. Um, the cupping is the main part you want to stay away from because it will cause you problems during the assembly process. This board is actually fairly flat. Um, it has just a little bit of twist to it, which is going to be okay. Uh, also, it has some defects in it. It's got a large knot here and a large knot down on the other end, but since the board's eight foot long, uh, we'll be able to cut around those pieces uh, with no trouble at all and still get all the parts um, for our project out of this one board. <clears throat> and another note to this board, um, it does have a small radius on one face and square on the other face. And so we're going to have to pay close attention to that um, during the assemble of our birdhouse. Uh, and I'll explain that more in detail when we start the assemble process to make sure we have uh, nice, clean um, seams when we're joining the parts together. Um, I do have my materials list here with all my sizes and dimensions and by the way this will be available down the link in the description below so be sure to check that out. Uh, we'll take the board over to the miter saw and we'll start cutting our pieces out. Okay so we have all our pieces cut uh, to length with the exception of the bottom, like I mentioned, we're gonna be cutting that piece to fit uh, during the final assembly. We have our back, our front, our two side pieces, and also our top. Now our top is actually eight inches by 10 inches. So we're gonna have to, I have two pieces at 10 inches. We're gonna rip these, both the four inches, and then we're gonna glue the two together. And, and while we're waiting for the glue to dry on this, we can move on and work on the other pieces of the birdhouse. So this, that's the next thing we'll do. Go over to the table saw and we'll rip these to four inches and then glue the top up. Okay, we'll just let this sit and dry and move on to the next piece. Okay, so these are our two side pieces. And like I mentioned, there's a, um, a radius on one of the faces of the particular board that I got from my local home center. And because I want our joints to be nice and uh, uh, square joints, P, you have to pay attention on the angles that we're going to be cutting on these side pieces. I want 
the, a nice flat joint on the outer edge is going to my back. So I want the radius on the inside edge of the birdhouse. And we're gonna be, uh, this is a 10 inch board. We're gonna be cutting um, an angle. So where the front part of the board is gonna be nine inches, the back part of the board is 10 inches. But we want again, have the two edges with the radiuses faces inward. So we have a nice square edge on the front and the back. So um, be careful of your orientation. If you have a board similar to like I have, what we'll do is we'll measure uh, nine inches up from the bottom, draw a line, cut that angle, and then we'll do that on the table saw. Okay, so what, how I'm gonna make this cut here, I'm gonna use my cross cut uh, sled, and I just have the very corner of the board lined up with the edge of my cut, uh, my cross cut sled, and then I measured nine inches up from the bottom, and I have that line um, also lined up with the edge of my groove in my sled. So when I make the cut, I'll have a perfect nine inch front and a 10 inch back. Okay, so our sides are done. Um, we have an angle on the front and depending on the width of your board, um, we're gonna check to see exactly what our angle is. And when I look at our board, we're right at 10 degrees, a 10 degree angle on our sides. We needed to check that because we're also gonna put the corresponding angle on our back as well as our front. And again, orientation is a key here. So for our back, we want the square edge facing our sides, so our angle is gonna go in this direction on our back. And for our front, the square edge is gonna to go towards the sides, and so we want our angle going this way. So again, orientation. Be careful your orientation of your boards when you're putting your, um, your cuts on. In fact, I'm gonna take my pencil and just gonna draw in there the direction of that angle and direction of this angle. And again, we'll go ahead and go back over to the table saw. We'll set our blade to a 10 degree angle and we'll make these cuts. So we have to tilt our blade to 10 degrees and I have this handy little tool here. We can put it on our table and zero to zero degrees and then we we'll take it, it's got magnets on it, and we clip it to our saw blade. And now what we can do is tilt our blade until we achieve 10 degrees. A little bit more. And there we go, 10 degrees. Now we can make our cut on the top and bottom. All right, so we're just about done with all the uh, milling on our pieces of wood. The very last thing we have to do is for our front, we have to put a hole, obviously, for the birdies to get in. It's gonna be an inch and a half hole, six and a half inches up from the bottom on center of the hole. And we'll make that hole over at the drill press. Okay, so now time for some assembly. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use uh, some screws. These are actually called trim head screws. And they actually have a very small head to them. And I really like using these screws because you don't have to drill a countersink. They are self-tapping and um, they don't leave a um, very uh, large hole for appearance. Um, I'm gonna mark uh, some di distance on my front and my back where I want the uh, screw locations to be and we'll start 
putting the box together. Alright, um, we have the majority of our box put together and like I mentioned this is where you can now see that uh, that nice square corner edges. You can see we have a nice seam on both sides of the front and back and then if you look inside the box you can see where those radiuses are and they, it wouldn't have looked good on the outside. So that's why it's important if you do have a piece of wood that does have a radius on the one edge that you orientate your pieces correctly. Now our top is, is dry. Again, this is an eight inch by 10 inch piece. Um, to make it look a little bit nicer, we're gonna actually go back over to the table saw and we're gonna put that same uh, 10 degree uh, angle on the back and front side of the top so the lines all match up with our birdhouse. So we're gonna go to the table saw and put those two cuts in right now. So just for reference, um, when I made the first cut, to make the second cut, you just flip your board 180 degrees and then go ahead and make your second cut and then your angles will be correct. All right, now one final piece like I mentioned. Now we can actually put a tape to our bottom and figure out what the dimension is here and cut our bottom. We're gonna slide our bottom in. Our bottom's gonna have relief cuts for drainage. Um, you can see here we have upper vents. That's a quarter inch vent on both sides for ventilation. Um, and then we're gonna screw our bottom in, but we're gonna be using flathead screws for those. So you can actually take those out um, each season and clean out the bird's nest and then put it back in and it'll be fresh for the following year. So let's put a tape on this and we'll cut our bottom piece to fit.
All right, so we have our bottom here. Um, I cut it, to, it has a really, really nice fit right in the bottom of the uh, birdhouse. I took it over to the bandsaw, I nipped the corners off, and then that will give uh, some drainage if any water or anything like that gets inside of our birdhouse, make sure they're nice and comfortable. We'll just slide this into place and we'll um, attach it to both sides with some flathead screws. And that way, uh, each spring, we can take the bottom out and clean out the birdhouse um, for that following year. And there we have it. Um, a very traditional style bluebird house um, made completely out of cedar and I'm sure this is a house that they'll use year after year. All right gang, there you have it. A beautiful bluebird house. Uh, very functional has vents uh, on the top for ventilation, cuts in the bottom for drainage. You can remove the bottom to clean it out year after year. And it was a very simple project to make. Hope you liked the video. If you did, smash that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, please cons consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. And remember gang, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything. All right gang, take care. See ya.